Hi peeps, look what I've got for you today. Look at the fantastic cheeses I've got for you today. And there's a little bit of a story. So last weekend I went to a wedding in the town of Battle, um, which is near Hastings. It's where the Battle of Hastings happened um, and began the Norman Conquest. Um, it was for a wedding of two fantastic Team Random members. We had an absolutely wonderful time and it's the most gorgeous little chocolate boxy um, town with a fantastic venue and fantastic to see them get married because there'd been a couple of cancellations due to Covid and to see all friends and family around. But I did get the opportunity to have a little troll down the high street and I bought this fantastic new cheese board. It's gorgeous, isn't it? I can't resist new cheese things. I've got lots and lots of them. Um, and I also popped into the deli and I got this, um, which is a Sussex cheese, um, and it's called um, Lord of the Hundreds. Um, so that's the main cheese that I'm going to feature today, but obviously I couldn't put it on its own on this great big cheese board. Um, now, the bride and groom had one of those cheese wedding cakes, yeah? Um, now, I didn't get to see it in all its glory because I went outside for a fag and then I got into an argument about Morrissey, easily done. Um, so I missed seeing the full thing, but I did get some of the leftovers. So I've got this um, Cornish Yarg, um, which I've, I have done before, so I'll pop the video up this side, I think, uh, later for you to watch. And also some Sussex Brie, um, which is quite ironic considering it's a Normandy cheese. Um, so we'll start with this. So it's the Lord of the Hundreds. This is our main feature cheese. Okay, so it's a used milk cheese, cheap cheese. Um, it's made in Sussex. Now the, the name comes from um, Lord of the Hundreds were like tax collectors. The Hundreds being um, not so much a number as like a portion of land or shire or something. Um, and it's made from local milk. Uh, now it's com been compared to a pecorino. Uh, it's vegetarian, it uses vegetarian rennet. It comes very much shaped like a pecorino, like a big sort of grey rounded square. And it is used often by chefs as an alternative to pecorino or parmesan, um, which aren't vegetarian. Uh, so I've not tried this before, and I've been wanting it for a while. This and one called um, Lord London, which I've also had my eye on. So I'm really, really looking forward to this. Okay, let's go. Um... Mmm. It smells more like a sort of, um, well, it does smell parmesan-y. Um, okay, so it is a bit like a pecor pecorino, except it's got a lot more kind of nutty butteriness to it than a, than a pecorino cheese, which is a good cheese. Um, Mm. Oh wow, a little bit of sweetness and some sort of burnt um, hazelnuts towards the edge, it's really good. Um, now, sheep cheese is actually higher in fat than um, cow's cheese, but it's full of fantastic nutrients, so hopefully when I've eaten all this I'll wake up tomorrow with the skin of a dairy maid. Um, perhaps if I leave my makeup on that might happen. So, what to have with this? Okay, so I've got this Sussex Cider. Um, because remember, what's local goes with what's local, what grows together goes together. Um, so this would go, and that would also go um, with this Sussex Brie, because both of these cheeses will go very well with like white fruits, like um, apples, pears, white grapes. This has got like um, an elderflower infusion, I think they call it. Let's have a taste. Mm, it's nice. I mean, I'm a bit, uh, it's a bit like... These gins, C ciders are going the same way, dark fruit cider, you know who you are. Um, they're kind of going the same way as the Alco Pops in the 90s, really, where you're getting all these kind of flavoured things and, you know, it's alcohol. You're not supposed to like it. It's not supposed to taste nice. It's not worth doing if it's not hard. Um, but yes, that would certainly um, go with these two cheeses. And I've also got, so I was going kind of like, was it a pecorino? So I've got this. Um which is a wine called Pecorino, which is Italian. Now, this isn't Italian, obviously, um, but I'm sort of going with the kind of what doesn't grow together goes together, but sounds the same thing. Uh, apparently, um, the goats that produce the Pecorino cheese um, like to escape and go and eat the grapes. Um, so this, hopefully, will, will go with it as well. 
Um, and as I say, like white boots, you can use it for cooking. So you can use it as an alternative to parmesan. It's really nice. It's um, it's a lot. Um, you could use this more of a table cheese than you would, I think, with um, pecorino. It's a lot more flavoursome. Um, this breeze is going to be good. And bearing in mind, it was brought back in the car and over about six, seven hour journey and wrapped in cling film. So am I going to finish all these tonight? This is the question. Well, I do have um, like a sort of um, FaceTime messenger chat party thing with the boys from the mansion. Um, so if I don't get through them all, I'll be sort of virtually sharing. I've, I've brought a cheese board to the party. I mean, if you wanted to do a, a proper cheese board, it should be one hard, one soft and one blue. So this isn't really going to um, pass in a restaurant. Um, but yeah, absolutely gorgeous. Lord of the Hundreds. Uh, so I'm going to enjoy this. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I will, as I say, post a link up to the Cornish Yard as well for you to watch. Um, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye. Hi, peeps.